Well, hello. Welcome back. It's been a while. I thought I would give you guys an update. Things have settled down over here, so I can get back to doing some stuff. The weather has not been very cooperative as far as um, doing cabinet work. It's either, well, it's been hot, and then it's been too humid, and then it's been too windy, or I haven't been at home. So, <clears throat> thought I'd start a couple of other little projects. I picked up a couple of radios. Um, this one was thrown in because it was a junker. The uh, handle, and thus so, the AM antenna is missing. This is a Zenith Royal 2000. I do have another better condition one. Uh, but I'm going to mess around with this one because the other one needs to be redone. And uh, this one works actually a little bit better, but it's in kind of sad condition. Um, the speaker's pretty gone. Uh, it's coming off around here and it's torn. Um, Although I guess that could technically be fixed, but uh, I certainly won't be buying a speaker for this, <laughs> this one anyway. Uh, so, uh, I thought I'd start messing around with some transistors. These make, uh, these make, uh, make things messing around, with or making the idea of messing around with transistors a little easier because they plug in and unplug. As uh, many of you are probably aware, there's quite a few videos out there on um, the Royal 2000s and on uh, the other radio I'm about to bring up to the top. So anyway, I'm going to start messing around with, with this. Uh, I've ordered up uh, a bunch of transistors. I went the Russian route because, well, because I can buy 30 of them for five or six bucks. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll see how that turns out. Um, so anyway, that's uh, this radio here, and I'm going to go ahead and push this off to the side. And I picked this up today, and it is very heavy. This is a, should be a familiar radio to most of you. This is a Zenith Transoceanic 3000-1. It's got batteries in it, so it weighs a ton. Um, so, probably don't need to go over this radio too much with you. However, I'll go over a couple of things about this one. First of all, this is going to sound so weird, but this was stored in a cedar chest or cabinet the last 20 years or so and it just <laughs> I can't help I can't stop sniffing it it smells so amazing uh, not only has this got to be one of the cleanest chassis radios I've ever gotten it's the best smelling radio I've ever had so uh, I left my penny across the room so I'll go ahead and pop this down I went ahead and put um, batteries in it it uh, did not have batteries in it. It was stored without batteries in it, which is good. Uh, let me zoom in here and see if you guys can see how clean. It's out of the way. I want you guys to see how clean this chassis is. I mean, it's just brandy new sparkly. And uh, I read some stuff on these transoceanics about how these battery covers are usually all mangled and warped and whatnot. And uh, this thing is very malleable, but it feels like Tupperware. It feels like a Tupperware lid. It's very soft, very pliable, and I would imagine that that's how these things, well that's why they didn't last. 
So, uh, everything on this works. The handle is still good. The handle still cranks up. The antenna is, you know, 30 feet tall. Hello. And um, I'm going to go ahead and take this out because, you know, I've got to do another obligatory uh, across the band. Let's see if I can get that back in after this. It didn't want to... I, I don't think this has ever come out before. So, one of the things I wanted to point out about this radio... Well, let me go ahead and unplug it. Half the weight of this radio on the nine batteries. So, good news on this is... Uh, too far over. Uh, I'll zoom out. Still can't see it. Okay, well, there you go. The output transistors still have the little heat shields on them. Looks like the little flying nun. I, uh, actually, I'm not going to take that out. <laughs> I did earlier. It was a pain in the butt to put it in. Uh, anyway, I just wanted you to see how clean this was. Transistors is a little wonky there. Alright. So, let me, uh, let me pause this for a second. I'm going to put the battery case back in. I know how difficult it is to put the battery case in this thing, so I'll be right back. Okay. I saved you from a few choice words. So, one uh, problem with this is that the Tolex here in the front is uh, pulling off from the from the metal and it's actually shrunk a bit um, I understand that's also a common problem with these and uh, it's the sides seem to be okay even though this was stored away I guess that kind of stuff can still happen anyhow so <clears throat> A couple of issues with this. Well, first of all, it needs to be aligned. Another thing is the Tolex is. Uh, oh, you can't see that. Tolex is coming off here. You can hear it popping off there. Uh, not that that can't be glued, but I've run into this situation before <clears throat> with other items. And. Uh, sticker on there. One thing this didn't have was the book. They couldn't find it. So at some point the book got separated from the radio before the radio got put away forever, supposedly. So uh, anyhow, as you can see, very nice and shiny. I haven't even polished it up or cleaned it really. It needs a little bit of cleaning, but uh, not too much. The dial light still works. original dial lights and uh, well heck let's just turn it on now um, I'm on FM so sleep train is your ticket to a better night's sleep now the uh, volume hey, control is not noisy at all some big sales no problem just check your local and the treble works. School. Or the tone control works. You can earn up to three percent towards your kids' school when you purchase qualifying back to school items. Just visit eScript.com forward slash shares to sign up. Throughout the uh, <coughs> range, so I don't really know what I, if I'm going to do anything with this right away. I'm going to leave the dial light on. It's kind of cool. The dial look, looks like it's off just a smidgen. Um, Chassis may have to come up a little bit. Just seems to me it should be a little higher. But uh, you know it's old. So I barely have the antenna up. I guess I can put it up further. So we'll do the obligatory. Go through the band. Oh, uh, it does need to be aligned. Right now, it's just below, it's about where, 
it's at about 97 and a half, 97.5. And this station that's coming in here is uh, 98.1, so it's definitely off. And 97.3 is coming in around 96.5. And 96.5 is coming in below 96, so. And this is, I think this is 94.5 is okay. Anyway. <laughs> oh, and hey, uh, this is the uh, adult jazz station. And NPR, and all the way at the bottom. <laughs> at our website, or you can write us a review on iTunes. Ouch. We're also that on hurts. Facebook and we're on Twitter. Where our okay, so uh, let me go ahead and switch it over to. This does have long wave. Uh, AM is going to be interesting. I've got my plasma TV on, so. Back experience. You make all the difference. So that's off too. This is 560 coming in around 550. Not a barbecue aisle, a barbecue. But 68 comes in pretty good. Now um, I'm in a stucco building, so. Also, the uh, antenna is, is oriented north south and. Uh, is it north south? Well, at any rate, I should be going in this direction. It comes in. Well. Hurricane to hit Florida in 11 years, and it's within hours of making landfall on the Sunshine State Northern Gulf. Anyway, this is supposed to be 740, and it's coming in below, I don't know, around 720 or so. This is uh, uh, 810 KGO. Not a whole lot else on. Uh, AM that I get. Seems to be picking anything up on uh, shortwave. Although I know it works because I can turn on my. Um, I could turn on my uh, signal generator and <clears throat> it's off too, by the way. Not the signal generator, but the. Uh... <clears throat> so, it does pick something up. 
Maybe if I went outside, but... I'm also up against a hill and in a little... kind of in a little valley, so... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this for now. I will, you will see me doing some stuff.